Hey guys, John from Deadland Steamworks here. Over the last couple of weeks I've taken two deck box orders and today I would like to walk you through the process of preparing the leather. On today's episode we will be tracing and cutting out the pattern, beveling the edges, putting a stitching groove in, v-cutting and folding the leather, then we will water harden the leather just a little bit so that we can let it dry overnight and come back tomorrow and do our tooling. Okay, the first thing we're going to need is our leather and our pattern. Here's our pattern, here's our leather. Get it on the workstation, let's get going. First, we're going to find a spot on the leather where we can place our pattern that uses uh, produces as little waste as possible, and I think this is a pretty good spot. Unless it'll fit, not the one fit there. It'll fit like that. Of course it'll fit like that. Maybe here? This might produce less waste than the other one. So let's use this. I also use a ballpoint pen. A lot of people use a stylus. It's whatever you prefer. I work with the flush side up. So anything that I draw on this side is going to be on the inside of the box. And, you know, it fits the scheme of what I'm doing anyway, so it's fine. So I'm going to first trace my pattern. Get that down. Even here where the edges line up with the edge of the pattern, I'm going to put a little mark there so that I know if I need to trim off any extra. And we'll just fold it around. Well, oh, we're off on. So let's adjust. I think it's okay there. I think I just messed up in this line. So let's go ahead and mark that. Bam. And then we'll come around here, mark this side. And turn off the edges here. Yep, it's a mess. That side didn't come out very clearly. So let's go ahead and put our ruler down here, and we'll just retrace this line. I've got to make two of these, so I'm going to go ahead and put another one on here somewhere. Maybe over here. I think this will be all right. There we go. Set my pattern off to the side, put my pen away. Now, a lot of people will use a head knife or something else to cut this out. I just use a good old box knife with the razor blade. That one has a bad blade on it. Maybe this one has a better one. Let's see. It's really to look like that. It's a much cleaner blade. Uh, we'll just put this one back for now. And now let's get started cutting it out. And after that cut, I realized that knife blade is bad too. Okay, I'm back. I've replaced the knife blade. Let's try this again. Razor blade, sorry, not knife blade. Razor blade and a box knife.
So we've got our first one cut from the bulk of the leather. Let's just go ahead and trim this one up real quick. It takes a second. There's no way to avoid some of this being scrap. The leather is expensive, so you always want to minimize how much scrap you actually have. And if you are going to have scrap, you kind of want it to be in pieces large enough to use for some other project. And there we have one of them cut out. Let's get this other one knocked out real quick. I recently downsized my workstation to a much smaller table, and this is really the first project that I've done on it. Space is definitely a little tighter. It'll take some getting used to. The other one was just so much room in the shop. All right, we got those cut out. Let's roll this back up, put it out of the way. A couple of scraps, we'll set those off to the side. The next thing we're gonna do, I didn't mention this in the, uh, the introduction because I forgot, but we need to round some of these corners off. And for that, we have this little tool right here. I don't know if that's going to show up on the camera or not. Let's see. There we go. It just cuts corners, uh, rounds them off. Kind of nice, quick and easy. And again, for all this so far, I work with the flesh side up of the leather. Do as little damage to the skin side as I can. Hit the right one and cut the right one. Okay, good. All right, that one's rounded. Let's get this one rounded. Okay, rounding is done. Next up, 
flip the leather over. And we're going to bevel the edges with this. We use an edge beveler. It's got a little V groove in it. You run along the edge of the leather and it trims just a little bit off. And we're going to go all the way around the leather on both sides, flesh and skin. Meat, flesh, that would make this the outside, this the meat side. Yeah, I don't know how people normally refer to it, but I refer to it as flesh and skin. I don't know why, probably wrong. But hey, whatever gets the job done. This just produces a bunch of little leather spaghetti, which is kind of annoying and I guess some people can use that. I, I don't, I just throw it away. It makes a mess everywhere. Okay, that's one side, let's flip it over to the other. This just makes the edge of the leather look nicer. Feels better against your skin if it's something you're gonna wear. All right, one down, one to go. Okay, put this off of here, put that away. Next up, we have our stitching groover. Now this is a little device that you run along the edge of the leather and it will cut a small groove uh, that the stitches will sit down into uh, to kind of make them flush with the edge of the leather. It also looks really nice and is an easy way to get that cool line all the way around the edge of your product and it also produces a bunch of leather spaghetti that again I just throw away some people might find a use for it I guess whenever you do uh, leather work where you do tooling from the back side of leather and push it out some people like to grind up this little leather spaghetti and use it as a pulp to backfill I don't know I don't do that kind of stuff haven't ever done it looks neat not opposed to trying it, just haven't ever had the call. Alright, and that piece is fully grooved. Now let's do this other one real quick.
I feel like this line, not only is it functional for the stitching, but it looks really good too. Very nice cosmetic bonus, if you will. I like the look that it adds. And there we go. Next up, we're going to get our ballpoint pen back out and turn our leather back to the inside. And on the back of my pattern, I have a bunch of lines where all of our folds will go. So what we'll do is we'll line the pattern back up with our piece. And I will just lift it up and underneath place marks where those lines go. Now after I get the lines placed down, I'll use my ruler and come back and mark those lines a little more obvious. Once I get all my lines done, I'll come back with a V-groover and I will cut a small gouge into the leather. This is where our folds will go. So I'll mark it up real quick. Done with our pattern. Get this one marked up real quick. Ten. All right, the V Groover has an adjustable height or depth, whatever, but it has a little blade there. So can I get this to focus a little better? There we go. Got a little V-cut blade that allows us to gouge a little bit of the leather away so that it'll fold and be correct. Now, I like to pull this towards me, some like pull it away, push it away from them. I feel like it's more controllable with this one. Though. And again, more leather spaghetti. I'll just do that for every line we drew. Second one. Okay, now we've got our V-grooves cut. Next up, we're going to uh, soak the leather in a mixture of uh, warm water and wood glue. In order to do that, you're gonna need a plastic tub. So now we're going to harden the leather. Uh, first, we're gonna need a plastic tub and some wood glue. 
and some warm water. Now you want your water to be cool enough that you can put your hand in it and leave it in there for a few seconds, but hot enough so that after a few seconds you don't want to leave your hand in it anymore. So give me just a second and I'll be right back with some hot water. Okay, now we're back. We've got our leather cut out into our uh, two patterns, two deck boxes ready to be uh, soaked, hardened, and folded up. I've got a tub of water that you may or may not be able to see depending on what camera we're on. And I've got um, some Wood Glue Max by Elmer's. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the top off the glue because holy crap it's stuck. Okay, got the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a good bit of this wood glue into our hot water. Now keep in mind this water is hot enough that I don't want to keep my hands in it very long because it will kind of burn. Um, but it's not so hot that I can't stick my hand in it to mix this up. Come on. Doesn't take a ton. You want enough in there that you can get some of the glue into the pores of the leather as the water opens it up and soaks in. So now what we're gonna do is take our hand in here. We're just gonna mix this up. I don't think the camera can possibly get down in here and see that there are still some chunks of glue running around in the water, but you just kind of want to break them up. Just wiggle your fingers around like you're scratching somebody's back. <sighs> My hand pulled back off a second. Okay, now we're going to take our two deck boxes and we're going to submerge them. The longer they're submerged, the warmer, the more the pores open up, the more glue soaks into the pores. So what we're going to do is we're just going to soak them in here for just a little bit. Now there's like a hundred different methods of water hardening and wax hardening and just other kinds of hardening leather in general. This is the one I like to use because it doesn't over harden the leather and make it brittle. It's not armor so it doesn't need to be that ridiculous. It just needs to be rigid enough so that the deck box will stand up instead of being flimsy. Okay, so these are pretty well good and soaking. Next I'm going to slide this over here out of the way and I'm going to get my marble slab out. And I'm going to get my rubber ended hammer. Rubber ended hammer. Bam. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to take one of these out of the water and just kind of get some of the some of the moisture off of it. It's soaked, which is good. It's what we want. Just want to wipe it off real quick though, so there's not like tons of water just pouring out of it. Okay. Everywhere that there is one of these V-cuts, we are going to fold the leather and just tap down the fold. It creases the leather so that it will stay folded, stay looking good. And then whenever we fold it all up, I like to take the inside or the side flaps and just kind of fold them in and then put the rest of it over the top like that. And we're just going to set this out of the way to dry. I'll put that right here so you guys can see. And tomorrow when that's dry, we'll come back and we will do the rest of our work on the deck box. Tool it, paint it, dye it, whatever we need to do.
All right, this one is even more soaked. So let's dry it off real quick. Not dry it, but dab off all the super extra running water. And we'll do the same thing. Fold, tap it down, and crease it. You don't have to beat the snot out of it, it's just a light tapping just to crease it. Sometimes I don't tap it at all, sometimes I just push it down with my hands. But on these deck boxes, I prefer the way it looks better with the harder crease with the bit of hammering. Alright, now that's it. We let those dry overnight, or however long it takes to dry them all the way, and we will come back and finish up later. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed what we've done here, and I hope you learned something from it. If you like what you see, please uh, visit my Patreon site and support me there. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, uh, come back for more. I'll see you next time. Thanks.